Hey folks, Kiltman here. Kiltman, at your continued service. Tonight you catch me wearing my wine red pirate sash and my modern Bruce, as in Robert the Bruce Tartan. Yes, some of you long-standing subscribers will know that if I'm sitting off at this bizarre sort of angle, it means I've got a little toy to show you, something very impressive. Mmm. And I told you on the previous video that I was in a massive Michael Myers kind of mood, uh, prompted by the test screening, the critically praised and really successful test screening for Blumhouse's um, Halloween Kills due out October this year, 2020. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> so, so much so that I couldn't wait to order something else, something else Michael Myers related. You know, I've got all the masks in there, there posters and the glorious soundtrack for Halloween 2 playing right now. So, big clue there. Halloween 2, I think you'll find. Yes. What might this be? It can hang on a shelf like that. Look at that glorious pumpkin. The, po the title scene, title credits, pumpkin, which opens up to reveal the skull as the camera moves in with that glorious pumpkin orange font. Anyway, a little splash of Velcro and we open up to find. Yes, this is the Halloween 2 Michael Myers Ultimate Edition by NECA. And uh, what a piece of phenomenal artistry this is. Lovingly packaged. Lots and lots of stuff to play around with, alternate heads as you can see there, an array of weaponry. You have the pumpkin there, which when I show you, you'll find it actually opens up to reveal a skull. Plastic innovation. Uh, some array of you know alternate hands. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I can't exist in this day and age without an array of alternate hands and alternate heads. I just couldn't exist without them. A different day, a different pair of hands. The weekend, a different head. You know, it's the way it works. On the back, you'll see all the things that are here. Look at this, you've got Ben Tramer's head. The famous Ben Tramer, because don't forget, Sam Loomis and um, Sheriff Lee Brackett are patrolling the streets of Haddonfield. They know Michael Myers has been shot numerous times. They know he's wearing a boiler suit and a mask. And then they suddenly see, you know, that guy approaching across the street a loom is just like bang bang you know and a police car smacks into this unsuspecting and totally innocent um bystander who happens to be ben tramer the guy that laurie strode you fancy ben tramer and ben tramer apparently has a thing for hair as well although this will be unrequited love because poor ben tramer gets slammed into a truck a van boom and it's incinerated is it him is it him or not? I'm like, <laughs> but he was wearing one of those masks. Only his was white, with a shock of white hair. Very striking image. And a spectacular scene in a movie which is the more action-packed of the original, you know, two Michael Myers movies. Now, I'm gonna try to get into this without making too much of a mess. But you guys know how cack-handed it's gonna happen here, isn't it? How cack handed Kiltman can be. Well, that was easy enough. I know there's some people out there going, don't take it out of the packaging. Don't do it. It's gonna lose all its value. I want to. I wanna take all this stuff out and I want to play with it. So there's the lovely, the lovely box. Nice imagery there. I'm not too sure what the hell he's standing by. Because don't forget, you see him scalpel in hand. In Halloween 2, his, his favoured weapon of choice is actually the scalpel. Here is the uh, replica scalpel. When he's been shot in the eyes. Now. Ah, if you look, if you look back here. On the back of the packaging, there is a hospital corridor, hospital door. That's great, that. I like. I do like that. 
there, let's put that out of the way. Let's see if I can actually get any of this stuff out without really mangling it all up. Folks, I'm not sure how new this particular figure is. <laughs> yes, um, those of you, the real devoted, still remember that I did slice my finger open with this very ski and do. The ski and do, folks, it's your little Scottish deer which lives down your boot, way down there. Right. You know, when you see other people do this, these sort of videos, they will edit at this point, and then the next shot you'll see, everything's out and all pristine. But not old Kiltman. Kiltman does it all in one take. You see Sam Mendes, 1917. All you want, take trickery. This is how it's done for real. No subliminal edits or cuts. Now, there's meant to be an enormous amount of articulation, but he seems very stiff and rigid. If you look, now, you have the controversy over the, uh, the colour of his boiler suit. You know, I, I've banged on about this a long time. I have the new blue boiler suit from the 2018, and obviously, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. I have that. I have the masks from you know all the various movies. Um, but Halloween 1978 and Halloween 2 from 1981, he wore a blue, sorry, blue. He wore <laughs> he wore a spruce green boiler suit. Now this this is coming across as very sort of well a sort of really it's definitely bluish on that. So I'm not too sure about the accuracy there. But it could be because a lot of it's filmed in, in Halloween 2, a lot of it's in the dark. Uh, you don't see any daylight sequences of him, which you do in the, the 78 version, where you can clearly see it's green. So maybe they've, they've done it to employ the shadow effect. But what you do have, and I like, is, uh, I don't know if you can see on this, he has six bullet holes around him there. You might see it better on the back, there's a few, there's a few exit wounds there. You know, there's a nice glistening one there, and there, yeah. Oh yeah, old Mikey boy's been pinged a good couple of times there. I shot him six times! I shot him in the heart! He's not human! So, let's... Does he stand up? Well, he, he will do. I'm gonna get some other bits out. I'm gonna get out the pumpkin. It's some kind of joke. They've been trickled to death tonight. You don't know what death is. So there's the pumpkin. Folks, I do apologize for the lighting here. It's not the best. So you can see that, nicely detailed. Got his stalk on it. Now, this does open. I can hear it cracking. There's a hinge at the back here. These are things that you, you just, you're terrified of, you know, doing stuff. You can take the head off and, you know, put another head on, but I really don't like doing it, you know, in case they just snap them. Now, okay, look, look, it is opening up, and you can see in there, and I believe that swivels around, because only one side actually opens up on this hinge, and the skull, you then turn the skull around. But isn't that good? Can I bring that in a bit closer? That's a nicely detailed skull. Look at that. Isn't that a beaut? Isn't it clever? You know, that's one of the beautiful aspects of Halloween 2 is that opening, you know, title sequence where it breaks open. So it's on a hinge at the back there, as you can see. Looks like a big orange bum. <laughs> anyway, let's put that back. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, there's three other hands here. Now, I'm not going to... I'm not going to take all these things out because you know I'm going to I'm going to drop them and the dog will end up eating them and oh then it's vet bills and the vet will be saying your dog's eating someone's hand but it's a really tiny little hand. Let's go for the heads. Watch as this pings out and goes through the ceiling. These blister packs, man! God, they're unyielding. Okay. Blood tears, Michael. 
You can get the mask of that as well with the blood tears. Laurie realizes that she's trapped in the um, the anaesth anesthesia room and bang, bang, Michael. And you get Josie in both eyes. Both bloody eyes. That's good shooting, that. Once again, that. I actually prefer that head. If you look at that. And a side profile. That, to me, is actually a bit better than, than that. I like the messy hair because this famously, his hair is all bedraggled and there's all little... When you wear the mask and you put the cosplay costume on and you, you try to be Michael Myers from the various versions, you've got to play around with the hair on the masks. Make it all spiky and weird. All greased up and, you know... Obviously smeared with blood. But yeah, I love this figure. I, I think it's a tremendous figure. Um, but I actually prefer the sculpt on that than that. So I can see that I may well end up using that head on this instead. Let's get the other head out. I, folks, I will try and, you know, that come out nice and easy. So here's the Ben Trainer head. That's quite nice, that, actually. Now, what you probably can't see is the eyes within that mask. There are Ben Trainer's eyes inside there. That's quite nice. And again, you know, of all, of all the, the shitty look, that night, that one night, the night that he comes home, you go and put on the same fucking mask and walk around on the streets and ignore, you know, a crazed, you know, psychologist and, and, a, and a sheriff Stop! Stop! Bang! <laughs> totally incinerated. And you, you see his body as well, like, and they have to identify him by his dental records. And it's, of course, it's not Michael Myers. Let's have a look at the weaponry. Now, what you've got, you have, it's, it's encased with a little lid. You have the hammer, the hospital night watchman, Gets tricked by a cat, you know. He goes down to investigate, you know, the, the door's been opened up, so he goes down to the basement of the hospital. And Michael springs out and puts the claw bit of the claw hammer into his noggin, like that. Very quick kill. That's quite detailed. There's actually, you can't see, but they put a bit of grain on the wooden handle. So that's, that's, that's quite nice. Obviously, these hands are built to hold certain weapons. Although he doesn't use it much in the movie, you have the trademark butcher knife. The Henkel's, uh, what is it, 12 inch? Or is it 8 inch? I always forget these. The Henkel's knife, anyway. Henkel's Master Chef knife. Uh, from the L Rod, which he picks up from the L Rods. And he gets the girl in the house next door. Look at that, that's quite nice. I have the prop knife from Halloween 2 as well. But. I have mentioned before about the, the spooks in Kilt Mansion um, that have a habit of nicking things and hiding things from you. Well, since 2018, when I went to the, uh, the premiere of um, Halloween 2018, dressed in full Michael Myers regalia from the new movie, so the blue border suit and the new old mask, you know, the old version of the mask, I had that knife with me, but when I come back, and I did loads of photo shoots, when I come back, that knife went missing. It's, it's in here, but like Poltergeist, it's, it's been taken to the other side. The flip side of Kilt Mansion, the other dimension. Still got the scalpel there. Which he does use more in, the, uh, in Halloween 2 than the knife. But not only that. So, I mean, obviously, here is the scalpel. Said scalpel. So that's that in super miniature. There you go. Alan Howarth's Alan retweaked Halloween theme alongside John Carpenter. They both composed and, and co-produced this soundtrack. And I prefer it to the original movie. Some people go, no, no, how can you? It's more synthesised. But I think it's because of the hospital setting. You know, you've, you've got um, heart monitors and stuff like that, electronic stuff. This kind of music really, really seems to fit that setting a lot better. So there's the little... I'm going to put... I'm gonna put it in hand in a minute, but um, 
just going to get something else out as well because another little weapon he uses. Who remembers this? The bloody hypodermic needle. Oh, Dr. Dr. Mixler. They turn the chair around and it's like, it's a lot, it's, there's one stuck right in his eyeball in close up. And the poor nurse, nurse Janet, as she, as she recoils in horror, Michael suddenly appears behind it in the shadows and then inject and puts it right into her eyeball. As well. Oh, wait, no, it's in there. He puts it in there, doesn't he? And you see that in close up. Michael, fucking hell. Certainly he gets very inventive with his kills in Halloween too. I mean, he drains the, uh, the head nurse, the, the matron, he drains her of blood. I always wondered about that. Would he really do that? And then you've got um, that dumbass kid who ended up being in, in, in Jaws the Revenge. He slips over in the blood, you know, knocks himself out. And then when he's in the car, or rather he gets in the car and Laurie's hiding in there and he sees it. He's got a crush on Laurie as well. And he just, he just goes, um, I think, um, uh, and then just passes out. And his head hits the other horn, alerting Michael Myers on the, who's looming around in the hospital grounds, that you know there's a potential victim there. <laughs> what is? He just passes out. There are some crazy moments in Halloween too, which are a bit silly. But I'll be honest, I love Halloween too. I really wish they hadn't ignored it so much with uh, the 2018 version. Right, I'm going to try and get that head off. Again, I hate doing this. You just think, snap, crunch, bust, beyond belief. <laughs> Done. As you can see, the, these things, there's a little, I don't know what you call that, a little stub. And there's a little hole in there, which you've got to try and now get this. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> and of course, I can't do it. And you, you don't want to push too hard in case you snap that stub off, that stem. Oh, God. <laughs> Get on the bloody thing. I'm sure this shouldn't be that difficult to do. Well, I'm just going to leave it balanced there. And I'm going to put the scalpel in his hand. Because the hands are nicely um, positioned to hold these various implements. The knife, the hammer hypodermic and of course okay can you see so he'd be swiping around now and then of course you know Sam Loomis who's already been stabbed with that he puts the uh, the scalpel into Dr. Sam Loomis but he manages to you know come back turns all the gas on all the oxygen you know, when they all the nitro, whatever the hell they have in these hospital rooms. I don't know what it is. I'm no doctor. You've heard of Dr. Kill there, but there's no Dr. Kilt man. And uh, it's time, Michael. And goes, you know, with his lighter. Kaboom! John Carpenter always does great explosions. Great explosions inside buildings. The explosion Halloween 2. I know he didn't direct it. I know it's Rick Rosenthal. I know, I know. But Carpenter did most of the action sequences and most of the kills, so it's got Carpenter's hallmark all over it. And that explosion is one meaty, beefed up fireball. And of course then in the thing, where again they blow up the, the compound from within, lobbing sticks of dynamite, the, the sound effect and the way it's filmed and the, the sheer violence of the explosions, fantastic. <coughs> Excuse me. That'll be the coronavirus. Just can't shift it, can you? You know? So yeah, there he is. It's Mikey boy. And then you see him come lumbering down the corridor and Laurie's cowering away. You know, and, and he's, he's just he's just engulfed in flames and he's still walking down with that. Doom. Doom doom. Doom. Doom doom. Ding 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 ding. It's just fucking awesome. So this, this is the, the Necker Ultimate. It's a Ultimate Michael Myers. Age of 17 and up. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. I do love the addition of that pumpkin. Of course, you can get the 2018 one as well, which comes with a variety of weaponry. 
and obviously the, the different um, coloured boiler suit and the different mask. And of course you can, you can get Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger and you can, Leatherface, you can get all these characters of, of course, but you know, and as much as I love them all, it's Mikey. So folks, I ordered this last night on Amazon Prime. I keep picking up Amazon Prime. I wish they'd send me a few freebies once in a while, you know. But they do do fantastic service. And uh, I ordered it last night and it arrived today. And uh, I think it's fabulous. And it's a good price as well. Because I've seen these things. As I say, I'm not too sure how recent this one is. But I think it's fairly, I think it's in the last sort of, um, it's in the last 12 months. Um, maybe, maybe even more recent than that. But yeah, he's brilliant. Now, I don't know if you're picking up the colour, but the blood tears are definitely red. It's just, you know, the light here. I do apologise for that, but hey, hey, it is what it is. The feet, you know, you can swivel the feet around. Although he's come out the packaging quite stiff, uh, he actually has got many points of articulation. I just wish I could get that head to stay on. You know, I'll have another go at this. You want to hear that? Boop! As it goes on properly. <laughs> but you're not going to hear it tonight, folks. I'll work on that. There's the back of the head. See, I love that, that scratchy draggled hair it is kind of strange kind of funky let's give him a different weapon let's give him the um let's give him the knife will the knife go in this hand yes it will there he is armed with the um the trademark butcher knife This is a wonderful bit of, bit of scoring. It's in the first film as well. The Haunted House, the Myers House. And of course, it replays in Halloween too. Let's have another look at the original head. Well, you know, now I took the head off. It does look good. And again, you can see the eyes. You might struggle to see that there, but the, the eyes are there. The blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. Yeah, that looks better. Actually, now I've took the head off. That's weird. Oh, before I forget, you can see here as well, you've got the, the bloody hole where Laurie has put the knitting needle in his neck from the first movie. That's, that's there, lovingly recreated. And it is, of course, on this one, on this head. I don't know if you can see up close, there it is. And of course, as I've said many, many times when reviewing the masks for the Halloween movies, that the same mask was used from 78 to 81, but it, it got discoloured <coughs> because uh, Deborah Hill, the producer, was a vicious chain smoker and she kept it in her house between the productions. So when it was brought out, it was all dishevelled and discoloured. And then, of course, Dick Warlock, who played the shape in Halloween, so with had a different shaped face than uh, Nick Castle from the first movie. <coughs> I do apologise for this. As I said in the, in the previous video, the coronavirus victims are incarcerated in quarantine about six or seven miles from where I'm sitting right now. Maybe that's too damn close. And um, But because he struggled to keep the mask on, he couldn't breathe in it. He kept having to lift it up so he could breathe. So he, he, the, the white paint, the ghostly like white paint on that mask would rub away to reveal the flesh coloured paint of the William Shatner mask which lay beneath. So the mask, when you buy the re replica masks now, they have to have, you know, it's all worn away so the flesh comes through. And because you see that in the movie as well, which adds a great sort of otherworldly effect, it, it gives it personality, that face, that mask. And you can see it quite clearly on the figure here that they've re recreated that. See, Dick Warlock didn't do the same walk as Nick Castle. His mannerisms weren't the same. Different build, different shape, different sort of rhythm to his movements. 
but it works in Halloween too, as he's going down the stairs. He doesn't need to rush. Bam, bam. And the music emulates his footsteps. It's brilliant, isn't it? Bom, 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 bom. Michael. Michael! See, out of all the, the villains, there's something about Michael Myers which makes him, in, in a way, I don't know, I'm supposed to say more sympathetic. That probably sounds a lot, you know, ridiculous, you know, quite bizarre. But because, you know, he, he was a small child, and they keep referring to him, you know, Michael, you know, as you humanize him. And in, in effect, in humanizing this beast, you actually make him, you know, more alarmingly scary. Because you know that behind there is just a young man. Well, in Halloween too, it's a young man. In Halloween, you know, um, 2018, he's a 61 year old man. But anyway, you know. But I do love, oh, something else as well. If you can see here as well. And maybe you can, maybe you can't. The edge of the blade is serrated. That is, that's a nice little touch there. That is actually a serrated edge. So, you know, they've gone to a lot of, you know, time and effort to sculpt and craft, you know, his the tools of his trade, shall we say. So there you go. Michael Myers. The ultimate Halloween 2 edition. From NECA. Very good. Nicely detailed, good size as well. It's a good, you know, it's a good figure, you know. He stands proud. Lovely addition of the Ben Tramer. Even better addition of this. Let's have a look at this again. Let's, let's crack the pumpkin open. Oh, look who's in there. Yeah. Old bony. Yes. Popping up to say hello. See, this is the bit, he's been shot in both eyes now. And he's swinging blindly up. It's a, it's a paralyzingly exciting sequence, the finale of Halloween 2. The film, you know, it, it was quite harshly um, received when it first came out. I remember Alan Jones, the great Alan Jones, British film reviewer, uh, instigated of many film festivals, and a guy I admire greatly, but he did not like it at all. He said it was it was a sick trick that Carpenter played, and he blamed the, the whole thing on Car at Carpenter's you know feet, and um, he just said that the first the opening sequence and then the music starts playing and you and you see um, Loomis and the subjective camera work going around prowling around the streets of Haddonfield. He says you're hooked, you're gripped, and then Carpenter unleashes a sick joke, you know. <laughs> but you know everyone's entitled to their opinion. I love it. I think it's a great movie. It's got some stupid moments to it, but it's got so many great elements as well. And some very attractive nurses. And that'll do for me. So folks, I'm going to leave it there. And in the meantime and in between time, you guys take it easy. Be safe out there. When you're playing duck apple, watch out for razor blades in the apples, you know? It's nowhere near Halloween yet, is it? And I'm getting all worked up for it. Anyway, guys, be happy, be healthy, keep it kilted, keep it Celtic, and I'm gonna see you all. Later. Sitting there, looking at a wall, not seeing the wall, looking past the wall, looking ahead to this night, inhumanly patient, Mr. Summer.